everyone welcome back to my channel this is your own dr spinach so we are completed with the introduction to pharmacology rules of drug administration and the first topic in our pharmacokinetic series that is absorption now it's time that we move forward with some of the basic yet most important topics that come under pharmacokinetics one of which is bioavailability and bioequivalence so let's start with the definition of bioavailability that says fraction of drug that reaches systemic circulation and is available for systemic effects. So let's begin understanding this by a simple body plan. The flow of the blood. The blood flows from GIT through the hepatocortical system into the liver. The blood then flows through the liver into the venous circulation through the hepatic vein and then to the right side of the heart. From the right side of the heart, the blood flows into the lungs and then to the left side of the heart through pulmonary vein. And finally, out through the aorta into the systemic circulation. Now let's suppose you took 10 mg of a drug orally. So this 10 mg goes into your GI tract and out of which 2mg is not absorbed and is excreted out. What happens next is only 8mg of the drug is left in the intestine and stomach to be absorbed. So this 8mg via the hepatic portal system goes into the liver where metabolism occurs. So out of this 8mg, 3mg gets metabolized. So only 5mg is left which goes into the venous circulation and hence only 5 mg of the total drug is available for the systemic action. Now we know how much drug we took and how much drug is available for the action to be produced. Therefore, bioavailability helps us determine the dose of the drug. Now let's suppose you gave the IV injection of the same drug. So in this case, the bioavailability of this drug will be 100%. I already told you about the bioavailability of intravenous route to be 100% in my previous tutorial about routes of drug administration. So I didn't explain it there, but here it can be clearly explained because there is no loss through GIT or through the first pass metabolism. Therefore, the bioavailability of intravenous route is always 100%. Now, that said, Bioavailability of a drug depends upon two main factors. Adsorption, that is, the drug absorbed through the GIT, and the first pass metabolism. Now, the theoretical definition of bioavailability is pretty easy to understand by each one of us. But the difficult part is the graphical definition of bioavailability, which is a bit difficult for the students to apprehend. So, the graphical definition over here is bioavailability refers to the rate and extent of absorption as determined by its concentration time curve in blood or by its excretion in urine. Let's begin with drawing the graph. So we are going to take plasma concentration of the drug on y-axis and time on x-axis. Next, we have taken three preparations of a drug. So, we have taken a drug in same amount but different preparation methods. So, we obtain three preparations of the same drug, say A, B and C. Now, talking about the preparation A, let's say you took this preparation only. So now it's going to get absorbed in your systemic circulation. So the plasma concentration of the drug goes up with time and then it falls down slowly. This is the concentration time graph of A. Talking about the drug preparation B, there is a slow rise and then a gradual fall in the drug preparation for B in the concentration time graph. So we can see that the bioavailability of B is lower than A. Drug preparation C, the plasma concentration of which goes higher in a shorter period of time but 
suddenly falls down in the concentration diagram. So this is the drug preparation C. So it has even less bioavailability than B. Another thing is that the therapeutic concentration that is determined of this drug is here at this point of the graph. Now, if the drug cannot cross this concentration in the plasma, then it cannot produce therapeutic effects. That means not only the oral bioavailability of B and C is lower, they cannot even produce the significant effects that are needed in the body. So this takes us to the next section that is bioequivalent. Oral formulation of a drug from different manufacturers or different batches from the same manufacturer may have the same amount of drug. That means they are chemically equivalent but may not yield the same blood levels. That means they are biologically inequivalent. So, in order for the two drugs to be biologically equivalent, the rate and extent of their bioavailability should not be significantly different from each other. Let's understand this by an example. Let's say a manufacturer X develops a chemotherapeutic drug ABC, which proved to be of therapeutic importance in cancer patients. Now, the patent of this drug will last for 20 years. So, after 20 years, when the same drug is developed by another manufacturer, say Y, let's give the name to this brand as 123 for the cancer patients. Now, in order for the drug 123 developed by the manufacturer Y, to be biologically equivalent to the drug ABC developed by the manufacturer X, the rate and extent of bioavailability of this drug in plasma should not be significantly different from this drug. Then only the drug 1 to 3 will be considered bioequivalent to the drug ABC. The differences in bioavailability of the two drugs may occur due to variation in dissolution and disintegration rates of the drug, which in turn arises due to different manufacturing processes in a pharmaceutical. That's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please click on like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell down below so that you can get the update as soon as I upload new videos. Until then, keep safe and keep supporting my channel. Bye bye.